Hello, my treasures. It's time for the Traveling Travel Agency mini set to release, which means it's time for the 11 day one decks that I have prepared for this mini set that you can all try out, ranging from very wacky to a little bit more competitive. There should be a deck in this video for each individual type of player since we're going to try to span a bunch of different type of playstyles. We're going to be first starting off with a infinite Unkiliaxlis using the new card Carnivorous Cubicle as a way to either revive Unkiliax the Primus or Rexa as our win condition thus giving us basically infinite mind controls, additional HP, or big taunt minions. We also will be trying to use anti-magic shell to protect the cubicle so our opponent can't do anything with it. And then we're going to use things like eternal layover as a way to give us additional bodies on board and then use the excavating package as a way to easily combo into the cubicle that will be reviving all of our key minions. So let's get on to the next list, which is going to be Big Demon Demon Hunter. Essentially, we're going to be using a lot of priest cards within this list in order to discount our Illidari Inquisitor. And then we're also going to be using the new card Envoy of Prosperity as a way to put our high cost minions back onto the top of the deck and then use Twilight Medium in combination with Sue Fancy to get additional copies. And then also using the Replicate Eater as a way to duplicate the Inquisitors that we will be using as our win condition. Hopefully OTKing our opponent with four copies of one and doing up to 33 points of damage even if we just use our hero power. This deck should be interesting to try to play because Demon Hunter does have access to a lot of early game removal tools and a lot of ways to buff up their own hero for very cheap and then also ways to duplicate such cards as Tide Pool or even Return Policy which will hopefully allow Big Demon Demon Hunter to be a fully functional deck. Now for Druid, we're going to be playing uh, Dragon Graybow Cubicle Druid. Essentially, the game plan with this deck is we're going to be using Graybow as our main target. However, we can also use Fey or even ENR as a way to duplicate itself off of Cubicle. This will allow us to get either infinite mana refreshes, infinite big taunts with lifesteal, or infinite death rattles that will be very difficult for our opponent to deal with unless they're playing reno jackson essentially the game plan is we're going to be using the dragon package as a way to scale up our mana as quickly as humanly possible and then relying on all these higher cost cards in order to overwhelm our opponent with a bunch of additional advantage that we will be gaining off of it Next list we're going to be doing is Secret Hunter sent around the new card dream planner zephyrus as a way to get us either Ice Block, the most powerful secret ever printed within Hearthstone's history, direct damaging spells, or AoE board clears all things that Secret Hunter struggled with before. And if we end up hitting Ice Block off of Zephyrus, getting multiple copies of Product 9 in order to stall out our opponent where they won't be able to deal with our infinite copies of Ice Block. Now let's get on to Priest. For this, we're going to be playing Res Priest, centered around the new card, Travel Master Dungar. This will hopefully draw out Amonthul, Leroy Jenkins, and Hedis as the three minions that we're going to be targeting. We are running Puppet Master Dorian as a way to discount Dungar down to one mana by drawing him off of either Pennant of Earth or Creation Protocol. This is a deck where you're always wanting to keep Dorian in your starting hand or any cards that can easily access him because you should, in theory, be able to OTK your opponent pretty easily in this list from either copying additional copies of Hedis or Leroy Jenkins, depending on how many cards you can use to overheal the individual copies of Hedis. Now let's go on to Mage, which is going to be Tourist Mage centered around the new Tourist Portal Monster Skyla. In theory, this card will allow us to use a bunch of the coin support that Rogue has access to, such as Metal Detector, 
in order to get us additional coins, which will then allow us to discount either Sunset Volley or Tsunami down to zero mana. Then on the following turn, we can duplicate these off of Convincing Con Man, making this a very similar deck to the Earthen Paladin list that I uploaded kind of recently, and probably one of the stronger decks in the mini set in my opinion, and probably one of the first decks that we're gonna be trying out on the channel. For Paladin, I'm gonna call this deck Tax Paladin, but really is Hand Buff Paladin. Essentially the game plan of this deck is to force our opponent to have some type of downside of playing any individual card that they could have in their deck. We have Cold Feet as a way to increase the mana cost of any minions that they might play. Custom Enforcer, if they are playing any deck that generates a bunch of random cards. Clumsy Steward as a way to force any card that they draw into to instantly be destroyed if they don't play on that individual turn. Trapdoor Spider as a way to get rid of any minion they slam down in combination with Footman that will protect either the Trapdoor Spider and the Tigerus Plushy. Then as our main win condition, we're going to be using Elite Torrent Champion as a way to force our opponent to spend as much as mana as humanly possible while hopefully then winning out the game that way. But if we don't, we have Hearthstone Brew as a way to negate the pick that we will be bouncing back and forth between each player's hand. This is actually probably the most meme out of all the lists that are going to be in this video, but it should be a lot of fun if you really want to make your opponent hate you. Now let's get on to the next list, which is going to be Ignis Weapon Rogue, essentially built around Ignis the Eternal Flame, hopefully hitting either a Lifesteal weapon or a One Fairy weapon for one mana, and then we're going to be buffing up the, that weapon with the new card Sharp Shipment, and some of the old synergy between Sonia, Valera, Skift, and a bunch of the other weapon buffing cards. We also do now have the targeted removal of a deadline in order to get rid of any key taunt minions our opponent might be having just so we can hit our opponent's face really really quickly with this deck and because we are low, running a low minion count in this list we should be pretty consistently drawing into ignis since a lot of these cards either draw or buff up our weapon making this deck quite potent ignis rogue is something that i've been trying to make work for well, I mean, ever since Titans has come out, and I think this is probably the best version of list so far. Now let's go on to the next list, which is Insidious Shaman. Centered around the fact that we have Turbulus as the, the new tourist in Shaman. This gives us access to Parrot Sanctuary in combination with Sasquatch in order to do 75 points of damage, though depending on how the synergy works, it could be up to 150 points of damage in a single turn. We're essentially going to be buffing up our eruptions through Insidious up to 5 damage per tick. And then using things like Needle Rock Totem in order to draw into them at the end of the turn. Since end of the turn effects do trigger on order of them being played down. So as long as we put the totem down last, we should be able to draw into all of the eruptions after they have been buffed up. We also have an easy way to slam down both Insidious and Shutter Block on the same turn now, thanks to Parrot Sanctuary, which should be a lot of fun, making this deck a lot stronger than it was before, since we do have a lot of targeted draw power. This is one of the two decks that I'm considering for my deck for tomorrow, but whatever one doesn't end up coming out tomorrow will come out Friday. Now for Warrior, we're going to be playing Gromash OTK Warrior, where we're essentially going to try to buff up Gromash as much as humanly possible through things like Char and the new card Reserve Spot as a way to discount him down to four mana and then using Crimson Expansion to duplicate him or either win through the alternate win condition of Odin as a way to use all of the armor gain that we do have in this list. We're trying to minimize the amount of minions we have in the list to maximize the amount of buffs that we can get off of Gromash so we can OTK that way. And hopefully this will showcase the power of a very old Hearthstone card that I've been wanting to revisit for quite a long time. Now let's get on to the final list, which is going to also be a big demon list 
Big Demon a Warlock. Essentially, the game plan of this list is we're going to be using the new support of Eternal Layover in order to give all of our big demons that have death rattle effects additional trigger of their death rattle, thus allowing us to swarm the board with a lot of big minions and also have a hand control -y style of list through things like Mountain Giant and Dark Alley Pack. This deck probably uses the least amount of new cards out of all the lists showcased today, but it is one of those decks that is long overdue to be showcased on the channel and is a very nostalgic deck, which is why I wanted to try it in this video. All right, so those are all the decks I prepared for the day one of the mini set. Let me know down below which decks you're most interested in trying out. And thank you all to who showed up to my theory crafting stream on Sunday where we came up with all these lists because it really did help me out with coming up with some ideas for classes that I had no idea of what I was going to try. But like always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.